If you'll turn with me to Exodus chapter 14, beginning with verse number 1. Familiar portion of Scripture. Exodus chapter 14, beginning at verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pahirath, between Migdal and the sea, over against Belzephon. Before it shall ye camp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say uh, of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land, and wilderness have shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told of the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his house was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with them. And, they, and he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them and camping by the sea beside Pahiroth and before Belzephon. Skipping down to verse number 11. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone? that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Verse number 13, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. For he will show to you today, for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. And the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Hallelujah. If I can for just a few minutes tonight, I'm going to preach with the help of the Lord. When there seems to be no way, there's God's way. When there seems to be no way, there's God's way. Yes. Hallelujah. You can be seated in the house. I want us to look together at verse number 13, and the Bible says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Uh -huh. For the Egyptians whom ye will have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. I came to this house tonight to, to prophesy, and I came to tell you that today right. is your day. God said to tell you that today or tonight is a night of victory. Right. Tonight God is going to deal the death blow to an enemy that's been plaguing your life. Right. And dogging your heels. Right. And riding your back. Right. And breathing down your neck. Right. And making your life miserable. Right. God's word says you're going to put something that has been over your head under your feet. Right. I want you to listen to our text. The salvation that he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Now I don't know what the Egyptians mean to you today. It could be sickness. It could be financial trouble. It could be family strife and turmoil. Or it could be people who are trying to destroy your life and attack your ministry. Or it could be a habit or an addiction that you just haven't been able to conquer. Whatever it is, God's Word tells us that today is your day for victory. How many knows here today that the devil, the devil is opposed to you having victory? The devil just does not want anybody enjoying the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. After the children of Israel are thrust out of Egypt, uh -huh. Pharaoh decides that he's made a mistake right. and he wants them back. 
and now he's in hot pursuit of them. Uh -huh. Verse number 3 said, For Pharaoh will say to of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land, and the wilderness hath sucked them in. Now Pharaoh is saying, I've got them right where I want them. They're trapped. Uh -huh. There's nowhere for them to go. I've got them right where I want them. Right. And most of the time when you hear those words, it's because somebody believes that they have somebody trapped, surrounded, hedged in with no escape. It's, it's because they believe that they have the upper hand and everything is in their favor. And when somebody speaks those words, it's with a sense of superiority, confidence, and assurance. It's spoken with the sense that the other party is at their mercy. And now their faith is in their hands. And they have the power to keep destroy or save and keep alive and I'm here to tell you today that that's exactly what Pharaoh was thinking how many times have we been in the place where it seems like all hell has broken loose against you and you look around for help but there is no help to be found and it feels like you're surrounded and the enemy's coming at you from every side. And then you hear that sinister voice of Satan laughing at you with an attitude of arrogance and self-assurance saying, now I've got you right where I want you. I know the devil's told you that. We've all, been, we've all been there. In fact, I'm talking to some people tonight. And uh, you're in my assignment tonight because I have a word of God for you. And I want to tell you that things aren't always as they appear. I want to tell you that there is more to this than meets the eye. And I want to tell you that it's nothing but a setup. God wants you to know that what looks like the worst circumstances you've ever faced in your life is about to be what will thrust you into a brand new glory. A brand new anointing. A new level of faith and power that you've ever experienced before. I know this may sound crazy, but some of you need to thank your enemies for pushing you into your destiny. Well, my Lord, why should I thank my enemies? Well, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for my enemies. Everything the enemy has sent to take you down, God is going to use it to lift you up. I came to tell you, don't give up on the edge of your miracle. God didn't bring you this far to lead you. He didn't call you out on the water to let you drown. He didn't call, bring you out of bondage and slavery of Satan's kingdom to let him devour you. I came to tell you help's on the way. And it's closer than you think. Mm, hallelujah. God said for me to tell you he's heard your cry. And he's seen your tears. And help is on the way. There's a miracle in the making. In our text, the children of Israel found themselves in a predicament. A bad situation. And a trap. I know we're faith people, but let's just be honest about it. We've all been there. We've all found ourselves in a bad situation that we just couldn't get ourselves out of. And sometimes we're there because of 